Hello, this is Hellbent and welcome to tutorial 3 in my auto hotkey tutorial series. In this tutorial we're going to be going over if statements and show you what exactly it is and how you use it in your programs or scripts. Um, before we begin, I've already gone ahead and created a basic illustration to demonstrate what an if statement is going to do for us in our programs. So, this first example up at the top is basically what we could do with all the scripts that we would be able to write up to this point using the tutorial one and two. So as you can see we have a start of our program or script and then it runs a basically a straight line right to the end. By introducing our if statements though we're going to be able to have multiple different outcomes for our programs or scripts based on if statements embedded within our program. So each time it comes across an if statement, we can think of it as a node that possibly changes the outcome of how our program is going to run. Okay, so just, a, like I said, just a simple illustration to show you what it is. Um, we can compare, like for example, we can think of our line up here as a novel or a movie where everything's already been predetermined, start to finish, there's no choice involved but our if statements are going to create it something that's more like a game or real life where the outcome can change as we run through the program. Okay, so that's that. Um, <clears throat> so let's begin. The first thing, I've already gone ahead and created a file and I've saved it to my auto hotkey tutorial series. I've named it if statements.ahk and I've added in my description as well as my hotkeys for exit and pause. Now we probably won't need them but as a course of habit it's uh, I like to add them in all the time. The first thing we'll do is if you remember during the variable tutorial we had introduced the message box. In this one we're going to introduce something else. We're going to introduce the input box where we're going to actually be able to get a value from a user and store that value into a variable in our program. So the way we were going to do that is we just type out input box and then a comma and then we need a variable. And the variable we're going to use, we're just going to use a, a temporary variable. So we're going to call it temp and then we need a comma and this next space here is going to be for the title. So we'll say this is our this is our title and then we put another comma and then this is going to be our prompt or instructions to the user on what we're looking what kind of values we're looking for them to add so we'll say uh, uh, okay and then that's it for that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually just add in a quick sleep delay because sometimes when we have these dialog boxes come up in rapid succession they tend to get buried underneath the programs that you have, windows that you have open. So to prevent that I'm just going to add in a half of a second delay from when we close the input box until our message box pops up. So we're just going to type out a simple message box, msg, box, comma, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say they, oh, and then our variable. So we had temp as our variable, so we'll do that. All right, we'll save our changes and have a look. Okay, so like I said, this is our title. So we have our title up at the top, and then we have our dialog or prompt where we're going to ask the user to enter something, and then we have our space where we can actually add a value. So for this one here, let's try a couple, of, do two different things. So we're just going to add a couple of numbers, okay, and it prints it out. They entered one, two, three. We'll run it one more time. And this time we'll write, write a string. Okay. And then it'll print out our string. Okay, so that's our input box, which we're going to be using quite a bit for this tutorial. 
<clears throat> Next, we'll actually introduce. Oh, I guess I should comment out. Uh, comment out this uh, first part. So I'll just comment it out. And then go ahead and collapse it. Okay, now our if statement. Once again, we're going to use our input box to get a value from the user. So it's input box, then a comma, and then our variable. We're just going to use a temp variable. And before that, what we're going to do, actually do is we're going to have another variable that's called not temp. Very creative name, I know. And we're going to say that it equals nothing. So we're just going to create the variable, but we're not going to assign a value to it. So in here, what we're going to do now is if we don't put anything in this spot right here, this is our title location. If we don't put anything in here, what it's going to do is default is whatever we named this file, our uh, auto hotkey file here, it's going to put our name in there. So in my case, it's uh, if statements dot ahk. So it's going to put that in there. And next, we need a prompt. So this time, let's uh, let's ask them to pick a number between one and ten. Okay. And now we're going to introduce our if. So the first thing we're going to say is if, and then in brackets, we're going to, or parentheses, we're going to say if our temp variable, no, you know what, I forgot that we added our not temp, so let's go back. What we're going to now do is we're going to assign our not temp variable the value of whatever we store in the temp variable. Okay, so our not temp is now going to be the whatever the person put in as their entry in this input box. Okay, so now we're going to say if not temp equals one. Now, okay, at this part we have a couple of options. If we know that the if statement is only going to have one line underneath it, where whatever the if statement is going to get us to do is only one line, so let's say I++, plus plus. if that's it, we don't have to do anything with it. That's fine. We can just continue on with our program. Whatever. But if we have more than one line where the if statement is going to control more than one thing, what we need to do is add in some French brace. So we're going to go down a line, we're going to tab over to make it look nice, and then we're going to put in a French brace or the curly brace, whatever you want to call it. I like French brace, so that's what I'm going to call it. And then we close it. So now anything that's in here is going to be part of that if statement. So if that if statement is true, or if it rings out true, it's going to do this stuff here. So let's have another J++. And I uh, equals... Actually, let's do that as an expression. I'm just doing this as a quick example. I know it's not really... Ex quick but uh, equals I times J okay so so whatever whatever if we have multiple lines in it we need our French brace In other words it's gonna only do the first one as part of the if statement and regardless of whether these things we regardless of whether we want these things to be in the if statement or not they're not gonna be in it I'm, what I mean, what I actually meant there is, uh, regardless of whether we want um, our if statement to be true or not, it's still going to do it. So even if our if statement rings out to be false, it's still going to do everything else if we don't have our French brace. So now me, I personally, I personally like to add, even if it's only going to be one line, I personally like to have my French braces. I find it easier to navigate my script. It does bulk it out. It does make my script longer than it needs to be. But I find it a lot easier to navigate and look at my script later on if I have these indentations and these French braces in it. I, I personally find that it it's, looks nicer to me. I find it easier to read and all of that. But you can choose 
if how you want to do it. Like I said, if you only have one thing underneath your if statement, or if your if statements only can control one line, you can do it without the French brace. Another option is if you are using the French brace, you can also have it where it starts immediately after our if statement and then ends underneath somewhere. But I don't like the way that this looks, so I do it this way. But like I said, a lot of it's down to preference. But just remember, if you have more than one line, it has to be encased in French braces. Okay, that out of the way, <clears throat> we can discuss this next part. Now, in our if statement, we can have it do anything we want. We can have it run a new program. We could have it calculate a, a bunch of variables and add them together, subtract, multiply. We can have it exit our program. We could have it pop up a message box. Pretty much anything that we can do in our program, we can do it in an if statement, and it'll only do it if the condi conditions that we s specify ring to be true. All right. Now to keep this simple, all we're going to do is just put a message box and we are going to say they entered one. All right. And then we can have multiple if statements. So if not temp. And as we go further along in this tutorial, you'll see we'll have a lot more examples that get more complicated. But this is just the introduction of the if, so for this example, we're just going to do it like this. So if it equals 2, we'll have another message box, and we'll say they entered 2. Okay, and I think that's fine for now. And we will... Before, like I said before, um, if we have input boxes or message boxes that are s pretty much immediately following each other, we can have a problem where it gets buried. So what we're going to do is immediately after our input box, we're going to have a, a delay. We're going to just sleep for a half of a second. And that's it. I think, I think we're good. We'll save and run our script. And it says, so as I said before, if we leave this blank, this space right here blank, it's just going to fill it in with whatever we named our file. So like I said, in this case, it's if statements.ahk. We have our prompt to the user, pick a number between 1 and 10. And then we're just going to pick, we already know what values we're looking for. So we're just going to use one of those. We'll use the number 2. And we'll press OK. And they entered 2 because... The if statement says it did equal to, so it's going to do the stuff that's inside of this. Okay, we'll do it one more time. We'll use the one. Actually, we'll do it two more times. So we'll do one. They entered one. We'll run it one last time where we're going to pick 33. 33 is not one of our things, so our program is just going to continue on as if that if statement wasn't even there. And that's it. Okay, so... Let me see how much time we're at. Okay, so I think that's it for this part. This is the end of part one. Come back for part two and we'll continue on. And I'll see you there.